Okay, this next video is dedicated to everything to get a fire going and I'll probably miss a few things and if you're anything like me I usually don't get a fire going first go it'll be the second or third go because I'm too impatient but um, I've got all the right techniques I just don't bother to use them but I'll go through some of the techniques in this video and some of the things that I've did and some of the things that I've made so let's get on with the video Hi, Gizmo here. If I keep changing clothes and I keep changing outfits in this video, don't be alarmed. This video was filmed over a long stretch of time. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be in different camping places and in different spots. But I've basically come out with all my different concoctions that I've made in this jar so we'll test them out and see how they go and see which ones are good, see which ones aren't one of the first things that I um, want to mention is that it relates to your fire steel and these are awesome they can get a fire going really well but You need a knife to scrape the fire steel. What do you do if you lose your knife? What are you going to do? How are you going to scrape your fire steel? Um, uh, it's a myth that you have to use carbon steel to scrape one of these. You don't actually have to. There's a lot of other things that you can use. I'm going to go hunt around in a minute and see if I can find myself some rocks. See if I can break a rock, get a sharp edge, do it with that. Might be able to find a piece of broken glass because there's actually a lot of rubbish at this um, campsite. Gross people. And uh, yeah, there's a few other techniques you can use to uh, scrape your fire steel. Your car keys, for instance. Um, so we'll just go through some of those things and see. All right, I've found a couple of different rocks and I've got a couple so I can use one rock to break the other rock. Try and get a sharp edge. There you go. I've got a sharp edge now on that rock. Let's see if that'll scrape the fire steel. There you go. Just a sharp rock that works. So some places you might not be able to find a rock. Okay. And I mentioned before, these are no good without a knife or the scraper that you need to um, scrape to get the spark. So don't lose your scraper or your knife. I just went hunting around and I found this piece of uh, broken glass. So let's see if we can get a spark off the uh, fire stool with this piece of broken glass careful not to cut my finger. Well oh, that worked really really well. Yep so you don't need your knife if you can find something else like a sharp rock or a piece of glass. Um, here's another one that might work. Let's see if I can scrape it with my car keys. Um, let's try this key. Yeah, you got a little spark there. There you go. Car key, that worked. I guess I'd need to find a rock and to get a sharp, try and get a sharp edge on this and then give it a go. This is a magnesium block. It's a solid piece of magnesium and it has ferrocium fire starter down the side of it. And the idea of these things is you scrape filings of magnesium off with your knife so you scrape filings of magnesium off build yourself a little pile up of magnesium and then turn it over and scrape the fire steel and the magnesium 
burns at like 2000 degrees and it should dry out any tinder you've got to uh, just get a big burst of flame happening in a short period of time um, you would still need some sort of a long burning tinder for this to work because the magnesium burns up pretty quick but if you're trying to get something wet to start at least you can you can actually get a decent flame with this thing if you want to compare carrying a fire steel to carrying something like a big piezo igniter or a big cigarette lighter the reason why you carry a fire steel in all emergencies is because it doesn't matter if it gets wet if you get a big lighter wet it won't work it has a flint inside and a, a rolly wheel that sparks against the flint now if that gets wet it won't work because it's trying to strike a spark off a flint and it won't spark because it's wet you know, you'd have to pull it all to pieces and dry it out or leave it out in the sun for ages but if you're desperate to try and get a fire going with a big lighter um, you might fail so the next thing is one of these things it's called a um, a piezo it's called a piezo ignition lighter and it's very similar to the uh, Bic lighter it has a piezo igniter in it though and a piezo igniter is a bit different than the um, flint and flint and sparker that's in a Bic lighter because it's kind of an electronic thing it works even if it's wet so if you compare the size of these two things it's almost the same size as my fire seal so do I carry this or do I carry this because this will actually still work if it gets wet now it's working now and if I dropped it in the creek or something it won't work because it'll be sopping wet but if you take the time and just dry it out a bit I'll just pour some water on it now that, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't light now because it's wet and it won't but if I try and shake the water out of it get the water out of it there you go now it was wet still lit straight away that you can't do that with your big glider it's a bit harder to get going when it's wet it'll actually stay wet for ages but with these things if they get wet just get the water out of them and because it's an electronic thing it still lights so which do you carry do you carry a fire seal or do you carry one of these I think the fail safe is to carry a fire seal because no matter what you can still get it going and like I said you can actually get it going if you lose your knife you can still scrape it with a sharp rock or a piece of glass and it still makes a spark and I showed you I used my car keys didn't work very well but I still got a spark off my car keys and that worked um, so yeah fire seal is probably the best thing to carry as an all-round thing for getting a fire going and that's why you see so many people carrying them it's like being back in the stone age we've got like things that make instant flame now but everyone's going around carrying this thing that's like scraping a fire why do they do that yeah it's because it's pretty much fail safe so there's lots of things for starting a fire like a tea candle you can use those because they burn for quite a while or two and what's good about tea candles, these little aluminium trays that are in, once they're in the campfire, they just burn up and disappear. Um, they're good for getting the fire going if you need a flame, but if on a windy day, they blow out real easy. They're not very good for that. Cigarette lighter. You'll find if you try and light a fire with a cigarette lighter, that starts burning your thumb after a while, so they're not very good for keeping the flame going. Matches. This is a um, just a redhead's fire lighter, you know, one of those barbecue fire lighters starting a fire in your home, starting your um, wood fire at home. This is uh, a barbecue fire lighter, and these are notorious for having the uh, flammable mixture through them being random. You know, some parts of it light really easy 
I might break off a piece to take with me and it's got no residue in it that actually ignites so sometimes they're really really hard to ignite sometimes they work really good so they're good to take with you as a fire starter but you just got to be wary of the fact that you know sometimes they won't light that one light lit straight away so that's a good piece takes ages to catch on fire. And, uh, yeah. There you go. It actually caught pretty well. Sometimes it just takes a long time to catch on fire and if you're trying to do it with a box of matches, you could go through a whole box of matches just trying to get it lit. You don't rely on them. That one's working really well, look at that. Last one I took camping, I couldn't get it to light. So yeah, just be mindful of that. Well, here's another thing that you could use in a pinch if you needed to start a fire is your actual cord of paracord. Once you get that started, that flame just keeps going. So if you needed a flame for a, a length of time, a piece of paracord might get your fire going quicker than a match or better than a matchstick. Yeah, and you might, you'll see me here using um, a cotton bud soaked in Vaseline. There's lots of different things for starting fires. And my go-to, what I always have with me, is uh, Vaseline soaked cotton balls. And uh, they take a throat really well. Look that, they start really easily. Um, so I've always got those with me to start a fire. Just cotton wool balls soaked in Vaseline. They're brilliant. Uh, these are those cotton eye patches, but you can use cotton balls. Just put a bit of Vaseline on them, and uh, they take the flame really, really well. Puff it up a bit, maybe. Yeah. Puff it up. Oh. As soon as I fluffed it up, it started instantly. There you go. I've used that a lot for starting a fire. The idea of a tinder to start a fire is you need a flame long enough to dry. All this stuff is lights really well, but it's all wet. You need something that's going to dry that out so it can actually catch on fire. And you can't do it with a match out of a matchbox. You need the flame to last for a long time. So you need something that's going to actually dry your tinder out so it actually catch on fire. That's why you need a tinder that'll burn for a long time. And they do a good job of that. That's the reason why you carry a piece of fat wood. It burns for a long time. Because as I've said before, in anything other than ideal conditions, it's actually pretty hard to get a fire going. And I never get a fire going first go, because I'm too impatient. I know how to do it, but I don't take the time to do it. Um, I'll usually get it going on the second or the third time. Just because, you know, you're just excited at camp, you want to get your fire going, you just throw a bunch of things, chick flame in, and, and away you go. Ten seconds later, it's gone out, then you got to, oh, I'll try a bit harder next time, and you do it again. And, It'll last for another 10 minutes and then go out and then eventually you go, I've got to do this properly and eventually get it going. But if you do it properly from right from the start, yeah, it should be good. Oh, here's another little tip for you. Pencil sharpener. Why have I got a pencil sharpener? Plastic. I'll show you why. I'll be back. I was saying before, you can't start your fire steel without your knife. Well, I showed how you can start your fire steel without your knife, but you've lost your knife. But in your little kit, you've still got a pencil sharpener. I've just found a pencil sized piece of stick. I can make tinder with a pencil sharpener. See that, I'm making like nice little bits of timber with my pencil sharpener. You can use that to start a fire. I don't need my knife. 
and that makes nice little shavings of timber really light fine pencil shaving shavings of stick that you can light with your fire steel and your piece of glass or your sharp rock There's something else you may not have seen before is a thing called a Fresnel lens and I keep one of these in my wallet just as a, as a magnifying glass something to read but it's just a thin piece of plastic with a um, magnification print into it and let's try this and see if we can actually get any sort of a, um, a concentrated beam with it yes there we go it's actually starting to smolder well I don't know if that came out on camera or not but you could actually get a fire going with this and it's thin as a piece of paper and uh, I always keep it in my wallet so I've always got it with me so there you go, I've always got a um, fire starting tool providing it's a sunny day and it's not too sunny today and I still managed to get it to go so put that back in the wallet I've got a fire starting tool in my wallet that I've always got with me so that little Fresnel lens that I showed you, Fresnel is spelled like this. Um, here's another one that's the size of an A4. And I think I should be able to get a really good um, size spot from this you know, on a sunny day. There's no sun out this morning, but um, yeah, it shouldn't have any problem starting a fire in something this big. And uh, what I have here is just a little metal tin and inside the metal tin I have some cotton. I was going to put this on the campfire last night. You put it inside an enclosed tin, throw that on the campfire and the material cooks and burns inside the tin but it doesn't burn up and burn away because it's enclosed inside a tin and that makes something called char cloth. And char cloth is very very good for starting a fire with a fire steel it grabs a spark and takes a spark real easily and um, I was going to make some so I could demo it but there's plenty of videos on YouTube you can google that and have a look at some charcoal so that's charcoal the way of making fire starter but that's how you make it get a little enclosed metal tin put some cotton material in it throw it in the campfire and make it till make it till it goes sooty and black and you just keep that in your kit in your in your tin or in a plastic bag it's always ready use as a fire starter. I guess the next thing to do now is to try out some of these um, fat woods that I've um, made. And, um, what is fat wood? Well it's actually part of a tree or part of a stick that's got a really strong turpentiney smell and um, it's actually combustible so it actually takes a flame and the reason I've come into this section of forest here with pine trees, trees that don't lose their leaves like pine trees and um, different pine trees have better properties than others but if you look for um, where the fork of a branch comes down in a tree down at the lowest point of a tree behind the lowest branch you can or at the foot of a tree and uh, cut, the, cut the branch off down there you usually find the fat wood around the base of the stem of the um, where the branch comes out and if you look closely on some of these pine trees you'll actually see some uh, resin oozing out of them so if I can find some of that and show you and uh, resin is really flammable as well and if you can dig some of the resin out you can light that but here's a piece of grass tree resin I'll just light it up with my um, barbecue lighter See that just continues to keep burning. It doesn't blow out easily. So there's a bush fire tinder. If you couldn't find anything else, at least you might be able to get a fire going with some of this, even in damp conditions. The grass tree resin, or xantheria they're called. Um, I'll just show you this little snippet here of me collecting some.
start digging around the base of these grass trees trying to find some resin it usually falls off the side and then rolls down on the bottom during a um, there's, there's a couple of bits just little balls of resin and, uh, yeah you find it by just digging around the base um, and sometimes you may just come across a jackpot like this one here there's lots lots and lots of big lumps of resin on this one okay what a haul that is that'll be great for a project here's a little tip for you if you are looking for dry tinder look at this this is underneath the grass tree this is all just pure dry tinder you would use this to uh, get a fire going quite easily um, the, the, uh, the grass tree Sanctuaria has lots and lots of uses with its resin and everything else that it has Yeah, it's really versatile tree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all these little different concoctions that I've made into homemade fat wood and see if anything, any of them burn better than any others. See if any of them actually work at all. So we've got nut oil, we've got linseed oil, We've got uh, um, grass tree resin. We've got citronella. And last of all, we've got terps. So let's start testing some of these out. Okay, so one of the first ones I'm curious about, see how it works, is the uh, citronella so there's a little stick of uh, pine that I've coated in citronella I'll just start uh, to feather that I'll make some shavings and and then finish off with a feather stick and see if I can get it to light with my um, fire steel The idea of uh, this tinder is that it's um, a flammable material, so it should take a spark and it also has no moisture in it, so it's nice and dry and that's what you want, and especially on a dank wet morning like this morning, which would be rather difficult to um, get a spark to ignite anything. Right. There's, a, there's a pile of uh, shavings my citronella let's see how we go with that wow that works instantaneously <laughs> and it's burning pretty cool <laughs> Jeez, that's pretty good yeah oh, I'm happy with that look at that Well that's a stick coated with citronella and the other good thing about it, it's citronella, it's a mozzie repellent. So I can have that stick burn away and it should um, repel mosquitoes as well. Yeah I can smell that, that citronella -y smell. Okay so the first one was pretty much a success. That's with a stick of pine. I've got all different, can't even put it out. got different types of timber here. Uh, here's a stick of um, hardwood. Let's try that because you know hardwood's a lot harder to get get going than a softer timber and uh, don't usually make um, fat wood out of any type of hardwood. It's usually made out of uh, 
pine and I'll show you where you get fat food from in the bush if you're ever looking for it. This is pretty difficult to make feather stick out of because it's a very dense timber. Just curious or not to see whether it actually catches a spark. Okay, there's a little bit there, let's try that. Smoldering. There you go. A little bit harder to start because it's a hard wood, but yeah, it's burning. It's working. So that's citronella. Terps or turpentine. I'm thinking this one will work the best. Have you ever had a piece of fat wood? It kind of smells terpsy. Let's try that. Woohoo! <laughs> it's going off. Terps. Work just like I thought it would. It's pretty good. <laughs> Go out. <laughs> this is good fun. I just only got it out. Uh, what else have we got in this bag of tricks? There's a tea candle. As I mentioned just a minute ago, you can get a fire going with a tea candle. And they're good, they work. There you go, now you've got a flame. Not much of a flame, a bit like the uh, grass tree resin. Not much of a flame, but it's continuous. The problem with them is, <laughs> on a windy day, they're no good. They just blow out real easily. So. Look, this thing is caught back on fire again. <laughs> it was smoldering away now. Now it's the way she's going. It's got it's got onto the uh, the waxwood stick, and yeah, it's gone. So I I think that's success. <laughs> that one. There's lots more things to start a fire, but the main thing is have something that's a tinder and you don't have to make your own <laughs> make your own it works really really well <laughs> look at that it went out and I blew it and it's back on fire again now I, I call that a, a success for sure eh? which one was that was that's that the terps term? yeah That's really good. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I had fun making all these um, different concoctions, but that doesn't mean you have to make your own fat wood or tinder. You can actually buy them already done. And this is a commercial product called. Um, wet fire it's called and here's a picture of the wet fire here now this one here is a commercially available um, fire tinder it's called 
uh, wet fire. You see that? This stuff's really good. It lights up really well, burns for a long time, and it's good for getting the fire going. Um, this stuff is a bit like your go-to for starting a fire like my Vaseline soaked cotton balls, but it's one you can commercially buy and take with you. And this stuff burns amazingly well. Let's start this up, see how it goes. It gets a really tall flame. Look at that. Look how tall that flame is. Now, if you can't get a fire going with that, there's something wrong with it. It'll burn for 10 minutes like that. You just gather your wood around it and let it burn. It's awesome stuff. And it's called uh, wet fire tinder. So even if your stuff's sopping wet, this will have enough time to dry it out and burn. And that's only like a centimetre square little chunk. Look at it go, it just goes crazy. It's really good stuff that. <laughs> I'll get back to you later when it finishes burning. It's gonna take a while. So there you go, there's a uh, some little um, tips and tricks about um, fire starting and little ways you can make your own fire starters, stuff you can find out in the bush to make your own fire starter, stuff you can use to make tinder with, stuff you can use to find dry material to make the fire start, what you can do if you lose your knife and you need to start your fire steel. You can see the, me making all these different concoctions on my making stuff channel just here if you follow the link or the link in the description. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video of me having fun playing with fire. <laughs> See you later. That's a wicked fire steel you've got there. Them sticks were good, eh? I reckon that was a success, mate. I reckon that was a success. That stuff's unreal, unreal eh? Mm. That stuff, it's just still going, still going strong. <laughs>